It's done. Everything is falling into place. The final important milestone in preparation for the four Starship launch has been completed. Alongside this is the unprecedented strong development of new infrastructure to support future Starship launches. Why is SpaceX still able to maintain such an overwhelming work pace despite being busy with the Starship Flight 4 event? In today's episode of Alpha Tech, join us to get the update on the most epic thing SpaceX just did with Starship at Starbase. This has even shocked NASA scientists. On May 30th, five days before the scheduled launch date, SpaceX finally installed the FTS flight termination system on both Starship 29 and Booster 11. Starship's FTS is a crucial safety feature, allowing the vehicle to be remotely detonated if it deviates off course or has a chance of putting people in danger. Ideally, this system would never need to be used, but it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Previously, SpaceX conducted two wet dress rehearsals. The first WDR was on May 20th, but according to analysis, this test was somewhat incomplete. Typically, the company aborts the wet dress around T-10 seconds, marking the start of the Detonation Suppression System DSS. This system has never been observed during testing. Additionally, SpaceX has not tested the water deluge system at that time. Therefore, even though the company confirmed the test is successful, it indicated that another test was still needed. On May 28th, SpaceX conducted another wet dress test for its rocket. This time, everything was done properly according to the procedure. The rocket's tanks reached the expected fuel level for the flight, and both the DSS and water deluge systems got tested. SpaceX once again confirmed this on its personal page. Starship and Super Heavy loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant in the rehearsal ahead of Flight 4. Launch is targeted as early as June 5th pending regulatory approval. While the content may not seem unfamiliar to us, the confirmation resembles a stronger declaration as they're getting closer to the launch day of the fourth flight. I won't speculate further, because in the previous flight, there were 10 days between the wet dress rehearsal and the launch, so the earliest potential launch date is certainly Wednesday, June 5th. Well, this is the time you should prepare everything to comfortably watch the spectacular show. This fourth launch will be different from the previous three, as it might show us even more interesting things. There's the fiery re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere by Starship and the skillful return of the roughly 200-ton beast Super Heavy. Although there are challenges, what's more important is that they've recognized them. CEO Elon said this on the platform X. There are many tough issues to solve with this vehicle, but the biggest remaining problem is making a reusable orbital return heat shield, which has never been done before. His post echoes comments made earlier this month when he noted that the primary goal of the next Starship test was getting through max re-entry heating. That means the second stage's novel heat shield, composed of around 18,000 ceramic hexagonal tiles, will be put to the test. Those tiles are designed to protect the second stage from the extreme temperatures experienced when re-entering Earth's atmosphere. One of the biggest issues, must suggest, that is the vulnerability of the system overall. We are not resilient to the loss of a single tile in most places, he said. That means a single, damaged, or faulty tile could lead to a catastrophe. As Musk noted in his post, surviving re-entry is just one part of the puzzle. The company will also need to establish an entirely new supply chain for the high-performance heat shield tiles and manufacture them at a very high volume. It's a tough problem, but solving it would move them closer to the holy grail of launch vehicles. Full reusability. SpaceX made major headway in reusability with its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket, which has flown 56 times so far this year alone. But although the company recovered the booster, the second stage is expended in its target orbit. By reusing both stages of the rocket, SpaceX is hoping to drive down costs to a fraction of what they are today, all while delivering many orders of magnitude more mass to orbit in a single launch. This next Starship launch will be the fourth in a series of orbital flight tests that kicked off last April. Before the launch can move ahead, SpaceX must receive a commercial launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the agency that's responsible for regulating commercial launch operations. The FAA also oversees investigations into rocket launches that go awry for any reason, so it's been working closely with SpaceX throughout the Starship test campaign. Alongside the bustling activities for the Starship flight at the launch site, another team of SpaceX workers nearby is also actively accelerating construction activities for the second Mechazilla. In the past week, significant progress has been made in the construction and transportation of vital components for SpaceX's Starbase. Multiple tower sections have been successfully moved from the port of Brownsville to the Sanchez lot. This logistical operation is a crucial step in assembling the infrastructure needed for future Starship launches.
Sections 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 9 are now securely positioned at the Sanchez site, ready for the next phases of construction. However, sections 4 and 5 still remain at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility in Florida. These sections are still undergoing critical work and finishing touches before they can be transported to Starbase. This careful preparation ensures that the sections will be ready for an immediate integration upon arrival. At Starbase, the construction activities are bustling with energy. One of the most significant developments is the preparation for a second orbital pad. In a span of just two weeks, SpaceX has dismantled the entire suborbital tank farm, clearing the area to make room for new infrastructure. This rapid progress is indicative of SpaceX's commitment to expanding its launch capabilities and supporting more frequent and complex missions. The creation of this second orbital pad involves extensive groundwork. Following the removal of the suborbital tank farm, teams will level the area and lay the foundations for new structures. This new pad will not only support additional launches, but also enhance SpaceX's ability to conduct parallel operations, significantly boosting its launch cadence. As the launch pace accelerates, we cannot overlook the ramped up production of the spacecraft. Indeed, the massive Star Factory has completed construction. Now it truly looks magnificent and prominent. So, how will it operate to achieve maximum efficiency in rocket production? Elon Musk has always stated that he wants his rocket factory to operate like Tesla's car factory, producing rockets in mass quantities just like making cars. Therefore, I have a hypothesis about this. Keep in mind, I don't expect this to be the layout. This would be more of a clean slate plan, like for a new facility. The core assembly would happen in three lines, with the outside ones moving in the same direction and the center one opposite. One production line consists of two shorter parallel lines that eventually merge into one. The first parallel line processes steel rolls into ring segments, which are then welded into barrel sections of various lengths. The second parallel line focuses on welding domes and nose cones. At the merging point, domes are sleeved onto the necessary sections. After merging, the line installs stringers, baffles, reinforcement members, and other structural components. Another production line, running in the same direction as the first, builds more complex parts. These include actuator mounts, flap attachment points, hot stage rings, piping assemblies, computer mounts, sensor packs, and more. Once completed, these parts are moved sideways directly to the central assembly line for integration into the vehicle. The central assembly line is where everything comes together. Barrel and nose sections enter at one end and move down the line. As they progress, various parts from the second production line are added. Header tanks and actuators are added to the nose section, sensor packs and external internal piping to the barrels, and mounts and smaller components to the thrust sections. The final segments of this line involve applying tiles to the ship components, and booster components are processed here too. The completed segments then travel through a tunnel to a high bay for final integration, forming a finished vehicle. This tunnel helps prevent foreign object debris contamination. In the high bay, final welding tile application and connections between segments, both plumbing and electrical, are completed, and the engines are installed. The finished vehicle then rolls out, ready for deployment. This layout will capitalize on the streamlined production and precise integration of components, aiming to enhance efficiency and quality in the manufacturing process. The segregation of tasks and specialized lines ensures that each component is built to the highest standards before integration. That was my thought. What do you think about the hypothetical way SpaceX will arrange the Starship production line? Please leave your comments below. By the way, if you have an idea about another process, please share and we'll discuss it together. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.